How do you find out your Hogwarts house? If you want to do it the easy way, you visit wizardingworld.com and click Hogwarts sorting and away you go. I'm huff puff by the way. Although I had a, a pair of time where I was slithering. We, we don't talk about that. But we all know the Wizarding World quiz doesn't give you all the questions. So how do you really know? It's put you in the right house. That's where the extended sorting hat quiz comes in. It then gives you the percentage it thinks you are in Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff or Slytherin. So it'll be interesting to see how much Slytherin there was actually in me or am I more Hufflepuff than I think? I reckon I'm pretty close if it keeps switching between them. Let's hit the test and see where I land on this scale. And then you can tell me in the comments where you do. Dawn or Dusk? I'm definitely more of a Dusk guy and immediately the two houses that I was sorting for from they spring up straight away. Hufflepuff and Slytherin. Forest or River? Definitely I think a forest. I like walking through the forest. Moon or stars? Stars. The twinkle in the sky. There's just something about the twinkle, isn't there? Which of the following would you most hate people to call you? Ordinary, ignorant, cowardly or selfish? Hmm. I think ordinary, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think I'd like to be called... I wouldn't like to be called ignorant. I most hate... no, sorry, I <laughs> made sure that question entirely. Ignorant, actually. Read the questions or you're going to get completely the wrong score. <laughs> After you have died, what would you most like people to do when they hear your name? Miss you but smile, ask some more stories about your adventures, think with admiration of your achievements. I don't care what people think of me after I'm dead, it's what they think of me while I'm alive that counts. Pirates like ask some stories about adventures, but I'm going to be honest, there's, there's not much to tell. So, I think miss you but smile. How would you like to be known in history? The wise, the good, the great, the bold. I think the wise. Ooh, we're Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff now taking the lead. Given the choice, would you rather invent a potion that would guarantee you love, glory, wisdom, or power? Am I going to end up in a completely different house? Oh no. Once every century, the Flutterby bush produces flowers that adapt their scent to attract the unwary. If it lured you, it would smell of a crackling log fire, the sea, French parchment, or home. Got a crackling log fire. Four goblets are placed before you. Which would you choose to drink? The foaming, frothing, silvery liquid that sparkles as though containing grain. The foaming, frothing, silvery liquid that sparkles as though containing ground diamonds. The smooth, thick, richly purple drink that gives off a delicious smell of chocolate and plums. The golden liquid so bright that it hurts the eye and which makes sunspots dance all around the room. The mysterious black liquid that gleams like ink and gives us fumes that makes you see strange visions. I think the chocolate and plums, that, sound, that, that, that sounds good to me. What kind of instrument most pleases your ear? The violin. I started learning the violin and that does not sound pleasant when you're learning the violin. <laughs> it really, really doesn't. Well, okay, open strings do and then it just goes downhill after that. The trumpet, the piano, the drum. I think the piano. I would say violin, when you're good at violin, violin sounds amazing, but otherwise it's, it's just very, very screechy and you're learning and yeah, love it otherwise. You enter an enchanted garden. What would you most be curious to examine first? The silver leaf tree bearing golden apples, the fat red toadstools that appear to be talking to each other, the bubbling pool in the depths of which something luminous is swirling, the statue of an old wizard with a strangely twinkling eye. I don't think I've seen this question before actually, but let's go for that one. The statue of an old wizard with a strangely twinkling eye. And this really is from the houses. Um, I'm not Slytherin, I am way behind, which is one of the houses that I was, I was Slytherin for years. Half off 29%, Ravenclaw 36%, Gryffindor, which I have no chance, 29%. Four boxes are placed before you. Which would you try and open? The small tortoise shell box embellished with gold, inside which some small creature seems to be squeaking. The gleaming jet black box with a silver lock and key marked with a mysterious rune that you know to be the mark of Merlin. The ornate golden casket standing on clawed feet whose inscription warns that both secret knowledge and unbearable temptation lie within. The small pewter box unassuming and plain with a scratch mushed upon it that reads, I open only for the worthy. I say the first one. I'd be a bit concerned as the animal inside, to be honest. A troll has gone berserk in the headmaster's study at Hogwarts. It is about to smash, crush and tear several irreplaceable items and treasures. In which order would you rescue these objects from the troll's club if you could? I would say the dragon pox first. 
Uh, the Ministry of Concerns. Yeah, I think we'll go for that one. Which of the following do you find the most difficult to deal with? Hunger, cold, loneliness, boredom, or being ignored? Oh my god, I get bored so easily and it's so annoying. <laughs> Which would you rather be? Envied, imitated, trusted, praised, liked, or feared? I'd say trusted. If you could have any power, which would you choose? The power to read minds? The power of invisibility? The power of, the power of superhuman strength? The power to speak to animals? The power to change the past? Or the power to change your appearance at will? I think I've always said this, I'd love the power of invis invisibility. What are you most looking forward to learning at Hogwarts? Apparition and disapparition? Being able to materialise and dematerialise at will? Transfiguration, turning one object into another? Flying on a broomstick? Hexes and Jinx, all about magical creatures and how to befriend or care for them. Secrets about the castle, every area of magic I can. Ooh. You know what, flying over a it does sound like fun. I don't know. It just sounds cool. <laughs> Which of the fun ones do you most like to study? Sense heroes, goblins, people, ghosts, vampires, werewolves, or trolls? Oh, I'd say sentries. This is really interesting actually because the results are looking very, very different from what I would expect them to. And we're almost at the end, which is kind of interesting. You and two friends need to cross a bridge guarded by a river troll who insists on fighting one of you before he will let all of you pass. Do you attempt to confuse the troll into letting all three of you pass without fighting? Suggest drawing lots to decide which of you will fight? Suggest all three of you should fight without telling the troll? Or volunteer to fight? Uh, probably the first one. One of your housemates has cheated in the Hogwarts exam by using a self-spelling quill. Now he has come top of the class in charms, beating you into second place. Professor Flitwick is suspicious of what happened. He draws you to one side after his lesson and asks you whether or not your classmates use... use <laughs> he draws you to one side after his lesson and asks you whether or not your classmate used a forbidden quill. What do you do? Lie and say you don't know, but hope that somebody else tells Professor Flitwick the truth. Tell Professor Flitwick that you ought to ask for a classmate and resolve to tell your classmate that if he doesn't tell the truth, you will. Tell Professor Flitwick the truth. If your classmate is prepared to win by cheating, he deserves to be found out. Also, as you are both in the same house, any points he loses will be regained by you for coming from first in place. You would not wait to be asked to tell Professor Flitwick the truth. If you knew that someone else was using a forbidden quill, you would tell the teacher before the exam started. I don't know. <laughs> um, probably number one, actually. Because I wouldn't like to get someone in trouble. I don't know. Yeah. A muggle confronts you and says that they are sure you are a witch or a wizard. Do you? Ask what makes them think so. Agree and ask whether they'd like a free sample of a jinx. Agree and walk away, leave them to wonder whether you are bluffing. Tell them that you are worried about their mental health and offer to call a doctor. Maybe and ask them what makes them think so and explain... Try and explain the things that they think away, maybe. <laughs> Which nightmare would frighten you the most? Standing on, some, standing on top of something very high and realising suddenly that there are no hands or footholds nor any barriers to stop you falling. An eye at the keyhole of the dark, windowless room in which you are locked. Waking up to find that neither your friends nor your family have any idea who you are. Being forced to speak in such a silly voice that hardly anyone concerns you and everyone laughs at you. I think waking up to find that your friends and family don't know who you are, it would be pretty terrifying. I wouldn't like that at all. <laughs> Sounds like a horror story or something, or at least a mystery. Which road tempts you the most? The wide, sunny, grassy lane? The narrow, dark, lantern lit alley? The twisting, leaf strewn path through the woods? The cobbled street lined with ancient buildings? I'd rather, I'd, I'd like a grassy, sunny, well lit lane where I can safely travel. <laughs> Late at night, walking alone down the street, you hear a peculiar cry that you believe to have a magical source. Do you? Proceed with caution, keeping one hand on your concealed wand and eye out for any disturbance. Draw your wand hand and try to discover the source. Draw your wand hand and stand your ground. Withdraw into the shadows to await developments, while mentally reviewing the most appropriate defensive and offensive spells should trouble occur. Yeah, I'm more actually the last one. Probably run away, to be honest. If you're attending Hogwarts, which pet would you choose to take with you? A tabby cat? A Siamese cat? A ginger cat, a black cat, a white cat, a tawny owl, a screech owl, a brown owl, a snowy owl, a barn owl, a common toad, a natty jack toad, a dragon toad, the harlequin toad, or the three toad tree toad. <laughs> that was a mouthful. Probably a snowy owl. You know, I, I have a soft spot for Hedwig. I'm currently in the video book of The Prisoner of Azkaban, and Chris Hanks and his constant going uh, um, scabbers. At least in this book, 
um, makes me, <laughs> I'm with Ron, stay away from cats. I kind of like Hedberg, I like owls, so the snowy owl is for me, I think. Black or white, I think we'll go for black. Heads or tails, let's go for heads. Left or right, let's go for right. Well, this is interesting. I am still in Hufflepuff. You have taken all the questions, I'm in Hufflepuff. I am relieved by that. This test shows I am 8% Slytherin. That makes me very, very happy. Um, I think it must have been the time they put me Slytherin in the official quiz. It must have been just the luck of the draw of the questions that time round. I am very surprised how high the Gryffindor score is. It's 32%. It's only like two percentage points away from Hufflepuff. And Ravenclaw was still quite high. I was still quite pleased if it was actually quite low. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened with that pure time that I was in Slytherin. I, I don't know what happened. I don't understand. But I'm glad that all the questions have put me in Hufflepuff. This makes me happy. It's my house. I feel, I feel like I belong. I feel like it's the place where I belong. I've belonged for years. I'll leave a link to this extended quiz as well. Do let me know your house in the comments and any questions you'd like me to answer. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.